Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. Do you know what's coming out of the mouth of Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation? If you have ever read the book of Revelation in the Bible, it's the last book of the Bible, out of Jesus Christ's mouth, it says, a sword is coming out of it. Now, that's a weird thing to think about if you're just thinking of, you know, maybe his mouth is open and like a, a sword is literally coming out. What is that? That's his word. That's this. And it says it's a sharp sword and a two-edged sword. Today, I just want to show you how he has not only sealed his name into the book, he has showed us how out of his mouth comes a two-edged sword, a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations, and that is the Bible. That is his word. This right here, this is spirit and life. So in the Bible, in the King James Bible, mouth shows up 424 times. So if you count every single time that the word mouth shows up in the King James Bible, there are exactly 424 mentions. The last mention of mouth is in Revelation 19.21 which says, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. That's the last mention of mouth, and that's the last mention of sword. They are both literally connected to each other. Which sword proceeded out of his mouth? Those are the last mentions. So the 424th and the 424th, because... Sword is also mentioned 424 times exactly in the Bible. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. So in Proverbs 6, 2, you have the 424,777th word of the Bible, and his mouth. Okay, now these two, <laughs> these mouth and sword, the way they show up in the Bible is just mind-blowing. So if you look at mouth and sword in the Old Testament, so both of them together, if you just search for both these words together, this is really easy to verify. Just download King James Pure Bible Search on purebiblesearch.com. Okay. So if you look up both of those search words, mouth plus sword, in the Old Testament and in the book of Revelation where it's revealed that it, the sword of Jesus Christ comes out of his mouth, you get a total of 777 mentions. If you just look in... Um, so mouth and sword. If you look at mouth in the Old Testament and sword in the entire Bible, I'll just put Bible. You get 777 mentions. So mouth in the Old Testament, sword in the entire Bible, 777 mentions. 
Malice and sword combined in the Old Testament and in Revelation, 777 mentions. If you look at mouth, all forms of mouth, so mouth or mouths, I'm going to put the little asterisk there, plus all forms of sword, so sword or swords, in the Old Testament, you will get 777 mentions. There are three different ways of doing that. And notice how they're all heavily leaning onto the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the side of the sword that is judgment. You don't want to be facing that side of the sword. You don't want to be facing the law. You want to be saved by Jesus Christ and by His righteousness, by the righteousness of God, which is manifested. Um, we want to be on the New Testament side of the sword. We don't want to be on the Old Testament side of the sword, but that's what's coming in Revelation. He's going to be judging with his mouth, with his two-edged sword, and that includes the Old Testament. And you don't want to be there for the day of the Lord, which is the context of Revelation when he when both of those last mentions, the 424th mentions of each in Revelation 19.21, where it says, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. So, the Old Testament side is judgment. And I believe that's why there's such heavy emphasis in this pattern with Old Testament. These things saith he which hath a sharp sword with two edges. Repent. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Even if you look at swords, just with the, the plural form, so, so we'll just say uh, swords with an S. <clears throat> you have 24 mentions. And then if you do swords plus mouths, oops, yeah, mouths. So swords, 24 mentions plus mouth, which is 18 mentions, you get 42 mentions. So this pattern of 24, 42, it's like intertwined between them. We literally have the sword in our hands. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper than any two-edged sword. I mean, that's sharp. That's precision. That's laser precision. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness. In the New Testament, the words faithful, let me just do it like this. Faithful and true. That describes Jesus Christ in Revelation 19 and also his word. Show up the exact same amount of times in the New Testament. His word is faithful and true. We don't even need numbers to prove that. We can literally just look at the Bible itself and see that we have the sword of Jesus Christ, of the word of God, in our hands. Okay, so one of the most emphasized verses on this channel is Isaiah 34, 16, because it talks about the book of the Lord in the last times, because the whole chapter is end time prophecy, and it's supposed to be sought out by everybody, by the world. So it can't be talking about the original manuscripts. It has to be talking about one book where you can seek out of that book, out of God's book, it has his name attached to it. And it's available so that everybody in the world can seek out of it and see that these things are coming to pass exactly like God said they would. So a big verse because that verse is talking about the Bible. So the Bible is prophesied in the Bible. In Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So it's, it says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And then it says piercing even to the dividing asunder, cutting in half of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Word of God cuts. It's the truth. 
And Ephesians 6.17 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So obviously it's easy to tell that, okay, so Jesus is speaking. Out of his mouth comes words. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. The sword out of his mouth is the Word of God. Now, just watch, because you're going to see that it, the Bible literally just puts it together for you that that sword is in our hands. So Revelation 2.16 repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. And then right before that in the chapter it was saying Revelation 2.12 and to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, these things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Uh, so let me go up here. So Revelation 1.16 and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Okay? So out of Jesus Christ's mouth in Revelation, a sharp two-edged sword. And then in Revelation 19, 15, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. So with the sword of Jesus Christ's mouth, he is going to smite the nations. And the Bible is the two-edged sword, and here is the cross-reference that puts it all together. Because in Revelation 19, you see that with the sword, that's what's going to be used to exact the vengeance of God. The fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So in Psalm 149, we know that when Jesus Christ returns, in that context of Revelation 19, he has 10,000 saints. Uh, he is coming on a white horse, and the saints are with him. Psalm 149, 49 says... For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. So in context, I have that in yellow because we're talking about the saints here. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, the saint's mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand. Two execute vengeance upon the heathen. Just like it said in Revelation 19.15, and out of, his, out of his mouth go the sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. The two-edged sword out of his mouth is in the hands of the saints to execute vengeance upon the heathen. And the punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. It is written. We serve the living God, and I pray this was a blessing to you, and we'll, we'll talk soon. God bless. I can't do these markers. They just keep falling. All right, anyways, here we go. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen. Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. 
And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God! For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. The course and the path of Balaam's reward is this. He is willing to yoke up with whoever and do whatever to get what he wants. So I said, we're going to go to the edge on this. So they said, Pastor, how far on the edge are we going to go? I said, we're going to do everything short of sin. He has absolutely no strings attached on his life. He is willing to walk along a path with anyone as long as he feels like it is benefiting him. I tell you what Balaam wants. Balaam wants to hold hands with God. And he wants to hold hands with Balak too and walk along the path. He wants to reach out and grab both worlds. But listen to me, you got to make a choice to live in one world or the other. You can't be a citizen of both this evening. 